Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Kishina, Mei and Makoto. Part 1. Huge shout out to that green machine for this story. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. Meanwhile at the same time the sealing was happening, Minato's wife, Kishina Yuzumaki, was resting rather painfully in a small cave where she had just given birth to her son Naruto an hour ago. She was worried. Very worried, the Kyubi wouldn't just up and attack Kanoha like that after being forcefully released from her seal by some random shinobi, wearing a very weird orange mask with a swirl-like pattern on it, which lead to a small eye hole on the left. Dot. What kind of shinobi wears orange anyway, I'm telling myself right now, no son of mine will ever will ever wear orange tebane dot she thought to herself. Shaking her head clear of silly thoughts like that she realized that someone was walking through the cave. After several moments of hearing the man stumble around the cave and curse from time to time about stubbing his toe on a rock, she realized through the man's voice that the person was the same man who attacked her and Minato before. What had happened? Had Minato failed in sealing the Kyubi inside of her little Naruto, was Konoha destroyed? All of those thoughts and much more like why was the man wearing an orange mask were swimming around in her head as she tried to stand up. You shouldn't be moving right now Kishina Yuzumaki, even though, thanks to your bloodline, you will survive giving birth to your son and having the Kyubi forcefully removed from your seal, it, I'm sure, will still take some time for you to recover from something like that. Seeing her about to speak, he raised his hand to stop her. Probably some insult or something like that. He didn't care though, he had a more pressing issue he had to deal with right now, like the fact that he was dying. That's what you get when you use the Sharingan to try and control one of its creators he surmised. He could say he deserved it though, some kind of divine punishment that Kamisama was dishing out because he had failed her. So what if he was evil and wanted to control the world? The man can dream can't he? Before you start rambling he told her. The Kyubi has been sealed inside your son and, as I am sure you are aware, in doing so, your husband is dead he stated as Kashina began to cry. Kami, crying women make me uncomfortable he thought to himself. Listen closely to what I'm about to tell you Kashina. I have a message from Kamisama herself. He said getting the redhead's attention. Your son has a destiny. I was told by Kamisama herself to give the one named Naruto Namikaze Uzumaki Senju. He spat out the last two names. The gift of my eternal Manjiku Sharingan. He finished getting a gasp sob from the crying woman. Now if you will Kishina he said unsealing a jar from a scroll he pulled out of his pouch. Take this and give it to your son. He held up the jar, which, when she took a closer look through her blurred vision, she recognized the same eye that the man in front of her had. Only one with the power of two can free the one born of the eternal flames he quoted before handing Kishina the jar which she accepted with shaky hands. I have no idea what's going on Tebane she thought. Arg the man suddenly screamed falling to the ground and clutching his head in pain. Forgive me Kamisama. The man yelled. I told you what would would happen if you betrayed me again Madara. A heavenly voice spoke out as the cave was suddenly bathed in a bright white light. Kukukuku it looks like I get another bad boy to play with. Another voice spoke out equally heavenly spoke out before whoever it was starting laughing. Kishina shivered at that moment, the laugh did not match the voice. At all, in fact it sounded evil. Kishina Yuzumaki the first voice spoke getting the second one to stop laughing. It seems fate has other plans for you right now. She spoke. As it is. I will take that eye and I will give it back to you when you reunite with your son. She said as she took the jar from Kishina. Wh who are you? Kishina asked more confused now than ever. And what do you mean reunite with my son, what's going on? Forgive us for not introducing ourselves. I am Kami and this is my sister Yami. The named woman spoke as she pointed to the second woman who smiled and waved at her. As for what's going on, well you will find out soon enough. She said before the cave was once again bathed in a bright white light. Before she knew what was happening, her entire world went dark. The last thing she felt was someone picking her up off the floor. A few minutes later atop the Hokage Tower stood the newly reinstated San Deami Hokage, here is in Saratobi and behind him were the members of the village council, both shinobi and civilian. Hirazin had told the people of his village that he had an announcement to make. So here they were anxiously waiting for said announcement. People of Kanoha the old man began. I have gathered you all here today to tell you some news. First off I would like to begin by saying that the Yandaime Hokage Minato Namikaze has passed away. He said gaining a lot of gasps from the gathered people. His death was not in vain though, that I promise you. He sacrificed his own life to save this village from the Kayubi no Yoko. He sacrificed his life by using Skaiki Fuin, a Fuin jutsu of his creation, that makes a contract with the Shinigami. In activating this jutsu the Yan Daimei gave his life so that the Kayubi would be beaten and sealed away. However. 
He went on the Kyubi cannot be sealed into just anything. The Kyubi can only be sealed into a newborn baby. As it is, there was only one baby born today, and that was this one. He said holding up the bundled blonde baby. This baby's name is none other than Naruto Namikaze Uzumaki Senju. Son of Minato Namikaze and Kishina Uzumaki Senju. Minato sealed the Kyubi into his own son to save this village from destruction. Everyone waited with bated breath to see what the villagers reaction would be. Would they see him as a hero or would they see him as the Kyubi? See him as a demon you fools, see him as demon, so that my plans for him can beg in here is in thought smirking slightly. Meanwhile to his right a man known as Danzo Shimura, one of Konoha's elders, was thinking the exact opposite. See him as he is meant to be seen, see him as a hero. The man thought. All of their respective thoughts were interrupted when an old man shouted. He is a hero. He is our savior. That old man just so happened to be Tuchi Ichiraku of the Ichiraku Raymond stand. He knew what a Jinchuriki was since he knew that his number one customer Kashina Yuzumaki, the boy's mother was one as well. As many people started to shout out their agreements, Hiruzen cursed them all under his breath, while Danzo smirked at his former friend's misfortune. And what are you going to do now you old bastard he thought to himself watching as Hiruzen handed the baby over to Minato's number one fangirl, otherwise known as Kiyomi Hirano. That was a bad move many thought. Of course they all figured that they could work something out. Something like, maybe they could all look after the son of the now deceased Hokage's son. However many of them backpedaled. Hiruzen never mentioned anything about Kishina. Where was she? Was she dead? Did she leave the village? If so, why did she? Contrary to what everyone was thinking, Kishina was still alive and inside the village. What the tuck is going on here? She asked herself as she looked around and noticed that there was a toilet and bed nearby, but no doors or windows. As she continued to look around trying to find any clue as to where she was, she heard what sounded like a door opening, even though there was none, snapping her head in that direction she saw Hiruzen Sirotobi walking through a door she could have sworn wasn't there before. Sirotobi, did you do this to me? Is my son okay? What's going on? She asked rapidly. One of my plans has slipped through my fingers. He said, more to himself than to Kashina. Now that the village sees your son is a hero, I cannot touch him. But Yaofi are all starting to think that you abandoned your son because you lost your husband. He said smirking. Wh what are you talking about Tebane? Let me go you old bastard. She said getting a hard slap to the face that echoed around the room. No one except me knows that this room exists, after all I am the one who built it for this exact purpose. He stated. You are mine Kashina and as far as I'm concerned you never leave this place. Quite ironic really isn't it? And Yuzumaki being held captive by one of their own creations. Herzen smirked. While that was happening Kiyomi Haruno was watching Naruto sleep next to her own baby a girl by the name of Sakura Haruno. Maybe one day they will be together, like I wanted us to be Minato she said to herself, as fresh tears started to stream down her face. Little did she know that when he grew up he would fall in love with her and not her daughter. Please be alright Kishina, even though we never really did get along, a baby needs its mother. Up in the heavens Kami and her sister Yami were watching everything that was happening. Do you really believe that this Naruto will be the one to free her? Yami asked her sister who was watching everything visibly displeased with what was happening. I mean he could turn out like Madara or him for that matter. She said glancing at Kami. Hopefully you don't get too involved with this one sister, but maybe judging by how attractive his father was and by the fact that he was Kayubi's host. Maybe this is one human I can have some fun with. Yami thought to herself as she started having perverted thoughts about a Minato lookalike doing some naughty stuff to her. Kami looked at her sister when she suddenly heard giggling. She must be having some perverted thoughts again. Hopefully they're not about me again, I told her that that was a one-time thing, even if it was incredibly kinky. Deciding to leave those particular thoughts until later she decided to speak. Shinigami-chan should be here soon. She said to her sister who was in the process of wiping some blood away from under her nose. As if on cue a black cloud of smoke appeared next to them. You called Kami-chan Shinigami said with a smile on her face and a glint her eye that both Yami and Kami both recognized. Kami, taking souls sometimes just really turns me on, especially if the soul is as good looking as Minato. Shinigami thought to herself. Damn excellent she's horny both of the women thought. How did things go down there? Kami asked. Very well, he seemed at peace with what he's done, you know saving the village and all that. His eternal suffering is an endless amount of effects with re deeds. Shinigami said giggling as she got a nosebleed. What kind of suffering is that? Both of them asked themselves as they too got nosebleeds. How is his son doing? Shinigami asked changing the subject. Well, so far so good for him but his mother, not so much. What do you mean frowning slightly, did she not survive like she was supposed to? The death god asked. 
She is alive and she has nearly recovered, but right now she is being held captive by Hiraz and Suratobi. Kami said. For what purpose? I don't know. Which makes it even more troublesome. Kami said looking irritated. Maybe he's doing it so that he can try and turn the little one into a weapon or something. Yami said. It is a possibility. Kami said. Meanwhile Yami was getting hornier and hornier, thinking about an older Naruto doing certain things to her, which is something that the Shinigami noticed, so she made her way behind Yami and cupped her sea cup priests, making Yami moan slightly as Kami, hearing this, just rolled her eyes at the two of them. Yami and Shinigami deciding to take this elsewhere, disappeared in cloud of black smoke and a burst of fire. After a minute went by and Kami was sick of watching Kishina and Naruto, she decided that she had had enough and left to go join her sister and Shinigami, but not before thinking. I hope you are the one who will free her Naruto Namikaze. Sai I miss you Amaterasu-sama and so does Tsukiyomi-sama. Somewhere in demon country a woman can be seen sleeping inside of cave dreaming of the man she once loved. Before she suddenly opened eyes and screamed to the heavens. The only thing that could be seen in the cave was a pair of red eyes with what looked like black flames swirling around inside them. Twelve years later. Naruto Nami Kazi Uzumaki Senju, your next shot at the academy instructor at Chunin by the name of Yumi Noruka. It was the graduation exam where every hopeful shinobi tried to become a genin. So far they had gone in alphabetical order with half of them passing. Half of the class was filled with shinobi clan heirs heiresses, while the other half came from civilian families who had, because they came from civilian families, no shinobi history in their families. Maybe that's why the exam is so simple. So that those from civilian families have a higher chance of passing. Naruto thought as he made his way down to the teacher's desk to do the three most basic ninjutsu, ninja technique, in existence. Naruto, please perform the Kawarimi no Jutsu for us. Instructed the instructor. Kawarimi no Jutsu, body replacement technique the blonde exclaimed replacing himself with his second sensei Mizuki. Very good Naruto, now perform the Bunshin no Jutsu. Hiroka said. Sai I cannot do that Iruka sensei The Yuzumaki said. Why not Mizuki asked looking curious. Because I am a Jinchuriki, which means that I have too much chakra to perform such a basic low rank Jutsu. He said in a bored tone. Ah yes of course, forgive me Namikaze-sama. Mizuki said bowing, gaining a groan from said Namikaze. He hated when people called him that. So what if he was the son of a hero? So what if his father was the Yandaimei, fourth Hokage? For as long as he could remember it was Namikaze this honorable son that, it was very annoying. Namikaze-sama do you know another Bunshin Jutsu, like say the Kage Bunshin Jutsu? Hiroka asked. Hi the blonde said. He would have thanked his older brother figure Ichiha Itachi for that one. That traitor, well a patricidal, genocidal bastard. He sure was nice enough to teach Naruto the very useful Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. Hell, Naruto was using it right now. You see the Naruto in the class was actually a Kage Bunshin. The real Naruto was currently in the headmistress's office sitting across from her having a conversation about some very naughty thoughts that they had had about each other. The headmistress was a beautiful woman, with blonde hair and black eyes, a nicey cup pair of priests, and very nice round fast that Naruto had dreamed about tucking for a while now. Am the perverted vixen sealed inside of me he thought to himself. Love you too Naruto kun a female voice inside his mind said. The so-called vixen was actually the Kayubi no Yoko or the nine-tailed fox who was sealed inside of him by his own father. They had a strange relationship that had started on his sixth birthday when hot Aki Kakashi, who had taken over from Itachi who had left the village, had decided to teach him that meditation was a form of training. Flashback. Now Naruto, meditation is very important thing for every shinobi to know. It helps them relax and it helps them focus. Kakashi said, not really paying attention to the boy because he had his nose buried in A, to Naruto's opinion, a very strange book where adults did. Dot adult stuff with each other. This particular book was called Icha Icha. Meenage. So far it was Kakashi's favorite book. You see this book had the main character Rashi Kazama have a threesome with a smoking hot reteed with D-cup priests and a smoking hot brunette who also had D-cup priests. Little did Kakashi know that the main characters were in fact his old sensei Minato Namikaze, who sometimes used the alias Arashi Kazama when he had to blend in with the civilians when he was on a mission. The redhead was actually Minato's wife Kashina Yuzumaki, and the brunette was actually Makoto Ichiha. They actually did have a threesome when Minato was appointed the Hokage. It was all Kashina's idea. But the perverted white-haired man peeking through the window writing everything they did down in a notebook wasn't. It was Makoto's, no one knew this, but she was a little kinky, and having someone who was the author of the most popular adult novels in existence, watch as she and Ichiha had a five-hour tuck fest with the hottest man and the hottest woman in the village, and have every pervert in the world know but not know about it was, in her books, a serious turn-on. 
heading back to the training and Naruto, who was currently sitting on the ground with his back against a boulder and his legs crossed, was trying to clear his mind of all thought, well as much as a six-year-old could anyway. He stayed like that for a while until he suddenly felt himself being pulled toward something. Opening his purple eyes he saw that he was standing in front of what looked like a shrine that was surrounded by a lush green forest. Seeing no one around and curiosity getting the better of the six-year-old, he decided to go walking inside the shrine. He was scared. It was dark, he hated the dark, he had always been afraid of it, but here he was playing Naruto the Brave. Shivering slightly he jumped, probably ten feet into the air, when torches that hung on the wall of the apparent room had suddenly lit themselves. Now he was even more scared than he was before because as far as he knew he was the only one there, which means that those torches actually did light themselves. That's because they did Naruto. A feminine voice rang out through the room, now if at all possible he was even more scared than he was before. Do not be afraid, I am not going to hurt you. The voice said this time in a gentle caring tone. Wh who are you? The blonde questioned. Giggling slightly the obvious female spoke. Have you forgotten Alri Narito-kun, I am the queen of all Biju, I am the Kyubi no Yoko. Oh okay was all the boy could say. Wait didn't Itachi tell him that he was a something called a Jinchuriki, and that the Kyubi who had attacked Konoha was sealed inside of him by his father. So then, how was all of this possible? How is this possible, you are sealed inside of me aren't you? Of course I am Blondie. The woman spoke a little irritated by the lack of fear he seemed to have of her. Is he more afraid of the dark than he is of a terrifying demon she thought to herself before she walked into some of the light that the torches were providing. So it turns out the Kyubi was female, a human female. Discovering this Naruto only had one question. What? He asked tilting his head to the side in a rather animalistic fashion. Huh? Kyubi asked in return, also tilting her head to the side, just as confused as Naruto was, but for different reasons of course. I didn't think his reincarnation would be so cute. Not that actually ever believed that there would be a reincarnation in the first place. She though to herself. You're a human? Naruto asked squinting his eyes. That makes him look more vulpine. He is definitely Kawei. She nodded to herself before she answered. Well yes and no Naruto-kun you see I actually have two forms. This human one and the nine-tailed fox form I am better known for because I have an ability known as shape-shifting, which allows me to change between a human and a fox. She said smiling as Naruto's mouth a perfect O. Awesome to Bayo. The boy exclaimed. Yep, definitely Kashina's boy Kayubi told herself as she giggled. Where are we anyway? Asked the ever-inquisitive six-year-old. We are inside your mind Naruto. The woman stated. Nani? Seriously? Why does my mind look so? Dot so. Dot cool. Well that may be because I am sealed inside of you. You see Naruto, this shrine is, well, it's my shrine, or merely a representation of my shrine that was lost in the sands of time Kayubi spoke with a frown marred on her beautiful face. Why do you have a shrine? Naruto asked. Simple really, I am a demon Naruto and hundreds of years ago the people known as Shintoists built a shrine in my honor so that once a year I could come to the same place and devour their human sacrifices. The woman spoke casually as she started stroking one her crimson tails that weren't there before. Where did they come from? Naruto shouted pointing a rather comical accusing finger at the nine fluffy looking tails as Kayubi started laughing. I am a nine-tailed fox Naruto. She stated before one of her tails lunged forward and grabbed Naruto, who screamed. Calm down Naruto, like I said before. I am not going to hurt you. She told him as he, hearing this, calmed down as much as he could. I am going to tell you a short story boy so listen up. It all started a few hundred years ago, back when demons freely roamed the earth. This was way back when there was no day to speak of and there was no moon to help light the darkness that covered the earth. Back then there was a demon, a very powerful demon that stood above all others. This demon was the ten-tailed wolf otherwise known as the Jubi no Kami. Now she was evil, she would devour humans JST for the fun of it and she would also kill and eat other demons that dared to challenge her, enter her territory, or in some cases even look at her. Everyone was afraid of her, demons and humans alike, because not only was she your stereotypical bad fast demon, she, like me, had the ability to shape shift between her human form and her ten-tailed demon form, so nobody knew when and where she was going to appear next. She terrorized them all for centuries, eating humans, destroying their villages, you know the things demons do. Until one day, when she was in her human form, she came across a human man, who believe it or not had the same eyes as you. She said purring slightly because Naruto had taken to absently stroking the tail that grabbed him while he was paying rapt attention to the story. Anyway she went on. It turns out that this male was different than all of the others, not only was he not afraid of her like everyone else was, he also had the strange ability to wield one's inner force, or as you know it to be chakra. 
Aside from all of that though, it was his eyes that caught her attention. You see she knew that those particular eyes belonged to a certain Kami, and if they were given to human then that meant that she and all other demons were in for some serious trouble. They fraught each other countless times over the coming decades, each side winning evenly each time. Until one day, as she found out later, she was tricked. This man had come to her one day and told her that she wanted to end the fighting between the two of them, because well he had fallen in love with her. The very same man who had been gifted with the eyes of one of her enemies, the very same man who she'd been fighting for decades. It was for those reasons she didn't trust his words. At first. After a lengthy discussion between the two, which was mostly he telling her how and why he was in love with her, she was finally convinced that he did in fact love her, so they came to a truce. But like I said before, she was tricked. You see the man had actually been in contact with the Kami who had given him his eyes and the gods themselves, who had devised this plan to finally rid the world of the evil that is the Juubi. Using the knowledge he had gained about his eyes. And using an ancient form of Fuinjustu, sealing techniques, he finally managed to defeat the Juubi once and for all, by sealing her inside of himself, when the Juubi who had recently taken to lowering her guard around him, had done just that. After the sealing had been done the gods themselves instructed him on how to split the Juubi's power into nine separate yet significantly weaker beings. After he had done that he had unsealed the nine Bijuu later were inside of him and sent Juubi's body to the heavens where the gods created the moon, finally giving hope to the human race. That all happened a couple of decades after the sealing anyway, as to what happened in those decades is a story for another time. She finished with a chuckle, seeing that Naruto had fallen asleep. Pulling him toward her, she began to wonder. Why do you have to look like him anyway she asked herself as she started stroking his hair. Soft she absently noted as she looked at the sleeping boy wondering what his future will hold. And if her presence inside of him will taint his soul like the Juubi did his. Is he asleep? Kakashi wandered finally pulling his nose away from his book to see how Naruto was doing. Flashback end. Okay Naruto please perform Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. Hiruka said. Fine. Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, Naruto exclaimed, with his hands in the ram seal. A puff of smoke later and the class on exact replica of standing next to, even thought they didn't know it, an exact replica of Naruto. Ignoring the shouts of Naruto kun is so awesome. Hiruka continued on. Excellent work Naruto, now please perform the Henge no Jutsu. He said as the entire class waited with bated breath to see what Naruto would do. You see whenever Naruto performed the Henge he would always transform into a 20-year-old woman. A naked 20-year-old woman. Surely he won't pull that off during his exams, would Iruka wondered as he too was waiting with bated breath. Henge no Jutsu. He shouted, while inwardly saying Warak no Jutsu, sexy technique. When he disappeared in a puff of smoke everyone was on the edge of their seats. When the smoke died down, in Naruto's place was a 20-year-old auburn-haired woman with F-cup freeze dangling in the air because she had turned around and bent over giving Aruka and Mizuki a nice view of her heart-shaped face. But what she did next was the nail in the coffin. Spreading her legs a little, with both hands, she reached around and spread her lower lips open, giving the two men a sight they would dream about for a while as the two of them both flew back with fountains of blood spraying everywhere. Dispelling the jutsu, the boys in the class roared with laughter at their sensei, while the girls were shouting hentai at Naruto. A few minutes later when the two sensei finally recovered Mizuki said. Congratulations Naruto Nami Kazi Yuzumaki Senju you are now officially a genin of Kanahagakur no Sato. He said tying to act like nothing happened earlier, while Aruka handed Naruto a blue hit I8 dot. Taking the hit I8 from Aruka he turned around and went back to his seat which, unfortunately was right next to his number one fangirl Sakura Hurano. The SST, hey Naruto-kun are you still coming over for dinner tonight? She asked. Yeah that's right, he was going over to her house for dinner tonight because her mom Kiyomi Hurano had invited him. Kami that woman is one hot milf she was the only reason he was going over there in the first place. Any chance he would get to spend time with her was definitely worth putting up with the pink-haired annoyance that was her daughter. Yeah I am coming. He said and maybe tonight I can make your mom fum as well. He thought to himself as he heard Sakura squeal. Dot loudly. Sai I wonder how the boss is doing. Naruto was doing well, very well. Right now he was in the middle of a hot makeout session with a busty headmistress, which started as soon as Naruto told her that he was finally a genin. When asked how he knew that, all he said it was all thanks to the Rinnegan. Her response was to shrug her shoulders and then lunge at him crushing her lips to his. It seems that with all the talk about Beepfex had really turned on any she couldn't wait any longer. Breaking the kiss the woman said. Lemon happened. That was amazing Naruto-kun, I'm glad my first time was with you. She said lovingly as Naruto pulled out of her. Naruto, smiling, pulled her up into a sitting position and kissed her deeply. 
A few hours later, Naruto was currently sitting at the Haruno's dining table mentally sighing as he heard Sakura tell Kiyomi all about her and Naruto's graduation exam. He did what? Kiyomi suddenly screamed. He wasn't expecting that one. He. Dottie transformed into a naked woman and posed for our sensei. Dot Sakura paled. Naruto Nami Kazi, you know how much I hate it when you use that jutsu. Kiyomi growled at him. Omen Kiyomi Chan Naruto said quietly looking down at the table. He hated it when she was angry with him. We'll talk about this later Naruto Chan, alright. Kiyomi said softer than before when she saw his reaction. Hi was all Naruto said. All of that aside for now the pink haired woman said getting up from her seat and walking over to him. Congratulations on passing she told him before she knelt down slightly and kissed his cheek, her lips lingering there for a few moments, causing the Jinchuriki to blush. Finishing the kiss she walked over to Sakura and hugged her say congratulations to her as well. Now that you've finished dinner honey, why don't you go take a shower while I talk to Naruto okay? Kiyomi told her daughter. Standing up with a smile, Sakura excused herself and walked out of the room. After a short comfortable silence between the two people left in the room, Kiyomi spoke. Do you mind explaining why you use that jutsu Naruto? She asked. I I was just having a bit of fun he said trying not to look at her eyes. I've told you before that that jutsu is sexist toward women and shouldn't be used just for the fun of it. She said sternly frowning at the new genin. You don't get it. He mumbled softly to the point where she almost didn't hear him, but she did. What don't I get? She asked curiously raising an eyebrow. You may see it as sexist Kiyomi-chan, but the thing is, unlike a henge, which is an illusionary transformation, my warak no jutsu is actually a real transformation. He said confidently to the surprise of the pink-haired women. What do you mean it's a real transformation? Amidst thanks to the Kayubi, it seems her yaki makes it real. So you actually turn into a woman? She questioned. Hi was his simple reply. Can you show me? She asked. Um hi. He said slightly nervous and shocked that she would want to see it. Standing up he put his hands in the ram seal and proclaimed Warwick no jutsu and a puff of smoke later, standing in front of the Haruno, was a naked brunette woman with sea cup priests and a heart-shaped face. Wow just like a male to make a perverted jutsu like this. She thought to herself. Moving forward toward the transformed Naruto she put her left hand on his now transformed cheek before she moved it down and cut the priests with both hands before raising her eyebrows. Well these certainly seem real, but I still need to test them. Five minutes later outside the bedroom Sakura was waking up. That couldn't have been real could it? She thought as she decided to take another look however this time it wasn't two women nope this time it was her mother giving Naruto a beep. She couldn't believe it, her precious Naruto-kun was getting a beep from her own mother. What? She screamed to herself before she fainted again. Two hours, several orgasms and continuous praisings of Kami later, the last thing Kiyomi Haruno heard before she drifted off to sleep was a quiet whisper of. I love you Kiyomi that came from Naruto. Why does he love me? She wondered before she joined the land of dreams with a smile on her face. Naruto who was now walking home was thinking about everything that had happened today. Why did my clone have to do that with AM, in public no less? He asked out loud to no one. I don't know but it sure was hot, I even had to skip my Anbu duties so that I could go home and picture myself getting impaled by that big piece of meat you call your beep. Said a woman from behind him. Getting over the shock of someone appearing behind him like that quickly, he recognized that voice, it belonged to the purple-haired hotai known as Yuga Yuzuki. Hey Yuga chan he said casually with a small wave. Hey yourself Naruto-kun. The beautiful woman said. Where are you of to I wonder, are you of to find you beloved am and screw her silly again? She questioned with a slightly hurtful tone in her voice which Naruto caught. Frowning slightly he answered. Actually I just had dinner at the Haruno's and I was on my way home. And that's too bad because fee, I just love going both ways she said licking her lips, making Naruto's beep stiffen slightly. Before he could respond they both felt a chakra signature coming towards them fast. Turning their heads in the direction the signature was coming from they both saw Mizuki hurry past with. Dot. Is that the forbidden scroll of sealing on his back? Why does he have that? They both asked themselves. Looking at one another for a moment they nodded to each other before they both jumped to the rooftops to follow Mizuki. A few minutes later they had followed him into the forest and it looked like he was waiting for someone to show up or he was waiting for something to happen. Either way Yugao thought it would be for the best if they apprehended him now. Sending Naruto some signals, which to her surprise and anger, he completely ignored them. Instead he just jumped down from the tree he was standing on. Mizuki he said, nearly getting a kunai to skull. Well that wasn't very nice. The blonde said sarcastically. Humph what are you doing here, Jenin? Mizuki spat. Well originally I came out here to tell you that I tucked your fiancé, but now it seems I'm about to kill a traitor. 
Naruto said with such an emotionless face, it was hard to tell if he was joking or not. Ahahaha don't make me laugh, you. A genin hopes to take out a chunin like me, please, this village may see you as their hero, but to me you're nothing but a pathetic light brat. Dot so why don't you just leave and go run back to your mother before you get killed oh wait, I forgot you have never had a mother. You've never fraud a Jinchuriki before have you? A piece of advice Mizuki. Never make a Jinchuriki angry unless of course you want this to happen. Naruto said as he activated his nine tails chakra cloak that completely covered the area in the fox's demonic killing intent. I I can't breathe Mizuki thought to himself as he tried to suck in some air. Mizuki knew he was finished when he started seeing the possible ways in which he was going to die. Please came the raspy voice of Mizuki please don't kill me please. Mizuki pleaded as he looked at Naruto who was just standing there with his head tilted to the side. The thing is, he would have responded if he could, but whenever he uses three tails of Kyubi or higher, he loses the ability to talk, so now as Mizuki continued to plead, Naruto using his kitsune arm, wrapped it around Mizuki, who due the force of the grab, went through the air, until his body came in contact with a tree, the kitsune arm still holding him up. Please please Naruto I'll do anything just please. Dot I beg you don't kill me. He tried to beg well that was before he suddenly couldn't feel anything from the neck down. The kitsune arm was no longer holding him up, in fact the thing that was holding him up was green crystal. Crystal? How? Both Mizuki and Yugao asked themselves. As the demonic killing intent suddenly disappeared from the air. Shoten, crystal release, he stated getting shocked looks from Mizuki and Yugao. Yeah, he chuckled. I'm just that awesome he said before turning back to Mizuki. Mizuki for treason, you punishment is death, but don't worry, unlike the torture and interrogation squad this method is painless and it definitely a lot more cleaner. He said snapping his fingers. Yugao watched as the crystal that was holding onto the tree and simultaneously holding Mizuki suddenly fell to the ground. She was stunned and I little bit sickened by the fact that when Mizuki's crystal encased body hit the ground. The crystal shattered leaving nothing behind except the untouched head and of course the forbidden scroll which fell to the ground with a thud. Picking Mizuki's head and the scroll up, Naruto turned to Yugao. I guess I'll have to see you go both ways some other day Yugao. Ja. He said before jumping away leaving a stunned and slightly blushing Anbu member behind. I have to tell someone about this. She thought before she too jumped away. Fifteen minutes later, Naruto was currently standing in front of the old bast of a, uh, I mean Hokage, who currently had a smile on his face. Just like how a demon should be, so willing to kill. He thought before he frowned at the thought damn that old man Ichiraku. Thank you Naruto. I appreciate your help in apprehending him. Now if you excuse me I have a council meeting to attend to. He said trying to get the Namikaze out of his office because he too had to leave. As the old man was about to walk through the door the crystal user asked. What do you want done with Mizuki's head? You can get rid of it I suppose. Good. Was all Naruto said as he walked forward and placed his hand on the skull. Here is in watched on in fascination as the head was encased in crystal. The next thing he knew was that Naruto had turned around and thrown the crystallized head against the wall behind him and next to the door. He expected the crystal to break, instead, when it did, he didn't expect the head to disappear. Turning his attention back to Naruto he was a little freaked when saw that the demon container was looking at the photo of the Yandaime that was hanging on the wall next to his and his predecessors. Can he see it? Can he see the seal? Or can he see the chakra? He frantically thought as he started to sweat. Damn it I hope he can't see anything with that damn dejutsu of his. It's too bad I have to go to that damn council meeting he thought to himself as he left his office without saying a word to Naruto, who was currently wondering what all the chakra that covered the wall was for. As heard the door close he quickly glanced at it to make sure the old man had left. When he saw that Hiruzen had indeed left his eyes went back to wall. Following the wall of chakra his eyes saw that the source of it all was coming from behind the picture of his father. Quickly taking the picture off the wall he saw what looked like a actually, he had no idea what kind of seal that was. That's an encasing seal Narukun the Kayubi said as Naruto appeared in his mindscape and kissed her cheek as a thank you. Now, how to release it he asked himself as he began to think of a way to do so. Let's try this first. You and Kai. He said not really expecting something so simple to work. Next second he saw the chakra on a rather and the wall slowly dissipated and a door suddenly appeared. Inside the sealed door Kashina, who was sitting on the bed trying to entertain herself by mumbling the words I'm a banana, I'm a banana over and over again stares lifelessly as the door to her hell slowly opened. However when she saw that it wasn't the wrinkling old bastard she had to come to know and absolutely loathe. She hoped beyond hope that after all this time she was finally saved. When the person entered the room. She was shocked, absolutely shocked beyond belief. Banado kun is that really you she asked hoping beyond hope that it was. When he heard Kayubi gasp as he walked into the room he was well. 
Surprised, Kayubi had never done that before. Do you know this woman? He asked her looking curiously at the woman. Dhth that's Kashina. She stuttered as her eyes were wide, and tears had started to slowly fall from her crimson eyes. Kashina. Hi Naruto-kun that's Kashina Yuzumaki your mother. Minato-kun is that really you? He hears her say. Staring wide-eyed at the woman he whispered. Hasan. Hasan. Wh what are you talking about? Who are you? The redhead asked. Staring at the blonde in front of her. Could he really my Sachi? My name is Naruto Nami Kazi Yuzumaki Senju Naruto said as her eyes started to water. Sachi-kun. She started to cry. It's alright Kas and it's time to get you out of here. He whispered in her ear as walked over to her and hugged her. Hi, thank you thank you thank you, she chanted as she hugged him like her life depended on it, which I guess it did. Come on Kasan, let's get out of here as he too started to cry. I can't believe she has been this close all along, and to think of all the times I've been in that Kami forsaken office. Don't think about that right now Naruto-chan at least you have her with you now Kayubi said trying to comfort. Her container, she, like Naruto was extremely happy that Kishina was alive, and by the fact that she hadn't abandoned Naruto like so many people like herself had thought. Stepping out the room Naruto quickly resealed the room and Shai shined out of the office, appearing a few seconds later inside the Namikaze estate. We need to get you some clothes Kasan. Naruto said blushing and looking away. And then we need to come up with a plan Sachi. Kishina said running up the stairs to her bedroom to get some clothes on. Plans for what? He wondered. Twenty minutes later Kashina came back downstairs and after a few minutes of comfortable silence between the two, because they didn't know what to say to each other, Kashina decided to the break the ice. I can't stay in Kanoha Naruto-kun. Nani? What do you mean you can't stay? He ached shocked. I can't stay here while the San Ami is still alive, when he finds out that I'm walking around the village it will just cause trouble that's just not worth it. She explained as Naruto nodded slightly in agreement. Even though he didn't like it, it was a good idea. Not saying anything he walked up to her and hugged her. Surprised Kashina smiled softly and wrapped her arms around him. Where will you go? He asked her after a few moments still not letting her go. Well I have a couple of friends in Kumo or I could go find Tsunade Bachan. Either way I need to leave this village. Tsunade he wondered, who is she? He wondered before Kayubi sent him a mental image of an attractive blonde woman with two waist long pigtails going down her back and a pair of G-cup priests. Though was all he said as he started drooling making Kayubi giggle and Kashina to look at him weirdly. You know she is technically your relative Kayubi told him. Your point? You know I fall under the craw. In which incest is legal. She finished for him remembering what Danzo had told her host. So you want to have facts with Tsunade now that you know what she looks like. HN maybe, probably not though, she's like 50 right? He said getting a nod from Kayubi who started giggling. What about Kashina she asked him. No, he stated seriously. She's my mother I could never do that he said, causing Kayubi stop giggling and get the idea to start teasing him. But you like redheads don't you Narukoi she said pouting cutely at him. You know I do Kayu-chan he said winking at her and thinking about doing certain things to her which made her blush since she could hear his thoughts. Turning his attention back to his mom he saw that she was smiling at him. Have you finishes talking with Kayubi? She asked him. Hi he said. So have you decided on where you're going to go yet? He asked. Hi, I think I'll go find Tsunade. She said as Naruto nodded. Then let me come with you. The blonde said. What? The redhead asked surprised. Let me come with you he repeated. I I can't let you do that Sachi she said with a frown on her face. Why not? He asked getting a little angry. Because I don't know how long it will take to find her and you have a life here, friends, I can't just let you leave all that behind for Kami knows how long. Kashina stated. None of that matters. You are my Kasan and I just found you, I'm not about to just let you walk away and leave. He said strongly getting a small smile from his mother. But what about your friends? She asked. I'm sure that once we come back and explain things, they will understand. Naruto stated with confidence. Bunch and have that run around the village. He said which impressed Kashina. Well I guess it's alright then she said as he smiled. But what will you do when we find? Tsunade. Will you stay with us or will you come back to the village? She asked him. My guess it would be better if I came back especially so that I can keep an eye on the old man. Well alright then, it sounds like a plan to me Tebane. Yada. He exclaimed making Kashina giggle. When should we leave? The blonde asked. Hmm. Dot well I think we should leave now since the old man will find out I'm gone any time now. Okay then let's pack then. He said making a kage bunchen without any seals before running up the stairs to his to his room with Kashina right behind him. 
15 minutes later the Nami Kazu Uzumaki pair were already sneaking past the Eternal Gate guards known as Izumo and Katetsu, who were currently discussing a certain event that Naruto was a part of. I'm telling you man he really had fex with AM on the counter. Katetsu said. I don't believe it, as if they would be brave enough to do that in public. Izumo countered. Well they did man there were even witnesses. They're even saying that Nami Kazu-sama is pretty hung for his age. Making Naruto roll his eyes and Kashina to look at him with a look that said explain later as they managed to sneak past the pair and head into the forest. About half an hour later as they were making a fair amount of distance between Kanoha and their as of yet unknown location, a woman made herself known to them. Halt. She ordered making them freeze when they both recognized the voice. Where are the two of you of two in such a hurry? The woman said trying be intimidating. Dot. We're on a mission Makoto-chan. Naruto said. Sighing Makoto removed her mask. Seriously Naruto-kun when I'm wearing my mask and we are in public you must call me Weasel. Hi hi. Gomen Weasel-chan he said smiling cheekily. Makoto Kashina said making Makoto turn to face her. It took a few moments for the Ichiha to recognize the redhead. Kashina-chan I is that really you? She asked shocked. Hi. Kashina said smiling. Gushi-chan. Makoto squealed as she hugged her longtime friend. Just picture it Naruto, your beloved Makoto and Kashina making out, their bodies pressed together as their tongues wrestle with one another. Kayubi said licking her lips. You know what would be even better if it were you and Makoto. He told her giggling perversely. MMM, I'm sure you'd love that Naru-kun. She said as Naruto rapidly nodded his head in agreement before he tuned back into Makoto talking to Kashina. So where have you been all this time? The brunette asked. Well here is and held me captive since just after the Kayubi attack in this secret room he had in his office. She said softly looking down at the ground as Makoto gasped. That was until Sachi-kun here rescued me earlier. The redeed said with grin on her face that obviously fake, which the others caught. Damn that Kami forsaken old man, first Kashina and then my clan, but how did he know that Kashina was in that cave, they didn't tell him Jureya-sama, Kugaku-kun, and I didn't tell him, so then it must have been Madara-sama, but why would he have to hear Izan about the cave Kami, I hope Kashina and Naruto never find out that Kugaku, and I told Madara-sama about the cave. The Ichiha prayed to herself before she turned to Naruto and decided to change the subject. She knew they weren't on a mission if Naruto had just rescued Kashina from her prison. So she thought she'd get more information out of them by. Dot beating around the bush. So little Naruchan has finally become a genin, hm? Hi Dadabeo. Naruto beamed as Makoto raised an eyebrow as she glanced at Kashina who had a smile on her face. Congratulations Naruto Koi. Makoto smiled softly as she hugged him, making the blonde blush a little bit. Thank you Makoto Haim. He whispered which brought a loving smile to the Anbu's face. I wonder if Sasuke-chan would have become a genin as well she whispered more to herself than to the others, but Naruto still heard her. I'm sure Duck but Sama would have become one Makoto-chan the blonde said trying to lighten her mood. Smiling at the boy she hugged him a little harder before letting him go. His comically childish on Ichiha pout, as Naruto called it that would appear on his face, always made everyone laugh. She remembered that too. Laughing. It seemed so strange to her now. She hadn't laughed since that day. She had come home from cooking Naruto dinner when she discovered them. Ichiha. Dead. Bodies lying all over the compound. Blood flowing out their corpses like a small river. Her aunt, her uncle, her cousins, her husband Fugaku and Sasuke. Little Sasuke. She remembered finding his small six-year-old body pinned to door of their home by a katana. The very same katana she uses now. She remembered his small eyes that were opened wide in complete horror. She remembered clinging to his body as Anbu tried to remove his body. No. She hadn't laughed once in six years, and it was all her husband's fault. Why? You may ask. Well. He was the one who came up with the idea of a coup he was the clan head. Yes he was responsible for everything that happened. Not her son Itachi. She always knew that Itachi was more loyal to the village than he was to the clan. He must have gotten that from me she thought to herself as she shook away the tears that threatened to fall, like they did every day. Looking down at Naruto she saw that he was looking worriedly at her. He was always worrying about her, which she just had to smile about. Come to think of it, the blonde bundle of joy always made her smile. Which was definitely nice she figured as she felt Naruto hug her. So where are you two really going? She asked trying to get her mind away from that horrible night. Huck beating around the bush she smiled to herself. Smiling Kashina decided to tell her. Sure she had no idea who this duck butt chan person was. Or why Makoto was so upset. But she figured she'd stay of it for now and she would find out later. We are going to find Tsunade Bachin she said with Naruto nodding his head. Makoto didn't like that. She didn't like that at all. Why are you trying to find her? She spat. 
Well that's definitely one way to get her mind off something Kashina Sweat dropped. Maybe it was the generations of Ichiha Senju clan rivalry. All Makoto knew was that she didn't like Tsunade, and Tsunade didn't like her. Because she's family Makoto. And I can't stay in Konoha. And you're taking Naruto with you? She asked eyes narrowing angrily. You're taking him away from his life, his friends. From me she told herself. Who was going to make her smile, possibly laugh if her favorite blonde was gone. It was my idea. Naruto spoke looking at her sadly as if he understood what she was thinking. Besides I have Kage Bunshin running around the village to make it look like I haven't gone anywhere. He smiled as he saw her face light up in a small amount of happiness that he wasn't truly gone from her life. And don't forget Naruto-chan that once we find Tsunade you're going back to the village. Kishina said making Naruto nod his head and smile when he saw Makoto's beaming smile which she quickly hid from them. There's something going on between these two Kishina figured. She would just have to find out later. Well that's alright then. She said embarrassed, scratching the back of her head, which is something she picked up from Naruto. Hi. I'm sorry Makoto-chan, but we really have to be going, we need to get far away from the village as fast as possible. Kishina said which made Makoto realize she had been holding them up for a while now. Hugging Naruto she bent down and whispered loud enough for only him to hear. Please be safe and come back to me Naruto Koi. I will he whispered back. I always will. Separating, Mikoto smiled at him before she went over and hugged Kishina. After they had said their goodbyes the two Uzumaki jumped into the trees. With Mikoto doing the same only in the other direction. I'm glad Madara or Hiruzen didn't kill you Kishina. I have always regretted that I told Madara-sama about that cave. Damn Ichiha loyalty, damn her husband and damn my life. At least now Narukun has you in his life. I wonder how you will react when you find out about us. A few hours later the now traveling duo had decided that they were a safe distance away from Konoha and were now taking a break while Kishina was. It didn't even look like Naruto had even broken a sweat traveling that far and fast. Man I remember when I used to be like that. Perks of being a Jinchuriki I guess. Well that and that the fact that I haven't moved around much in the past 12 years. Speaking of Jinchuriki she had yet to ask. Sachi-kun. She said trying to catch her breath. Um. Naruto inquired not looking in her direction because her white shirt had gone see-through thanks to her sweat. Sure he had already seen her naked when he found her. But this was just ridiculous. Did she forget to put on a bra or something? Why don't you ask her and find out Kayubi said. Her perverted side coming out slightly yet again. How does the village treat you? She asked slightly worried. They treat me fine, well better than fine actually, they think of me as a hero. He told her which made the former Jinchuriki sigh in relief. I'm glad they do Naruchan, I was always worried that they would treat you like the Kayubi incarnate or something. Well it really could have gone either way if it were for Ichiraku Tuchi. I've been told that it was really thanks to him that they view me as they do. Which made Kishina smile as she remembered her the old man who made the single greatest food in history. Liza Raymond. Any further thought on the heavenly food known as Raymond were interrupted when Naruto had to ask. Um Kishina. Um. She inquired looking at him and noticing he wasn't looking at her. Did you um did you forget to put on a bra? He asked trying his absolute hardest not to look in her direction. Looking down she realized for the first time that her shirt had indeed gone see-through. Blushing, she stuttered. Well I oh you see I was in such a hurry to get out the village I didn't be she tried to say, but she was interrupted by a scream of new please don't. Stiffening. They both turned toward the direction it came from and hearing another scream they decided to go and check it out. Crouching down in some bushes a couple of minutes later, they had come across what looked like bandit camp, and it looked like they had just captured three people, one male and two females. Noticing they had hit I-8 they recognized the symbol as the insignia for Kumagakur. When Naruto saw hat the blonde Kinoichi currently had her large frieze exposed, Naruto figured that she was the one who screamed. Growing angrier by the second the blonde shinobi decided enough was enough, unleashing Kai on the area he jumped out of the bushes and into the camp, leaving a shocked Kashina behind. I can feel the Kayubi in that, but there's something else, something tainted. She thought to herself still staying in the bushes. She knew these bandits were nothing special. The only ones capable of capturing shinobi with Chunin level reserves like those three down there were either Chunin level or higher, and they obviously had shinobi training, so she decided to wait until those certain people appeared before she made her move. Lokuten Hijutsu. Jukai Koten, Wood Release Secret Technique. Birth of the Dense Woodland. Naruto exclaimed as a forest shot up from the ground and wrapped itself around all the bandits who were still too shocked by the sudden Kai to try and get away. Hyoten. Tsubam Fubuki, ice release. Swallow snowstorm he bellowed. All the shinobi watched as fifty needles of ice took the form of swallows and launched at the trapped bandits, instantly killing them. Mokuten and Hyoten that he was able create out of the water in the air. Gosachi. Tebane. 
Kashina cheered to herself as she punched the air before she realized what she had done and lowered her arm looking around, hoping that no one had seen her. Stopping his kai, he turned to the exposed Kumo Kanachi and taking off his jacket, he wrapped it around her body, getting a quick a thank you from her before he walked over to the dead bodies to find the keys to the cuffs the Kumo Nin were bound by. He had finally found the keys when a man made his presence known. Well, well, well. Look at what we have here, a brave little shinobi come to rescue his friends. The man said. Turning toward the man Naruto instantly recognized him from the bingo book. Bakusho Awe. Naruto said. Bakusho Awe. That's me. The man said cheerfully. I'm impressed that you are able to use Hashirama-sama's Mokuten Jutsu as well as Hayuten. Who are you blondie? Your god. The Rinnegan wielder stated simply getting a chuckle from the green-haired man. No seriously, who are you? He asked again as Naruto raised his right arm up on front of his body. Shinra Tensei he said calmly. Ashina watched from the bushes completely bewildered as Aoi went flying backwards. What was that jutsu he just used? Eyes wide as he made his way back to his feet. What the tuck was that he asked himself. I guess I can't mess around with this kid. Aoi said to himself. Making his way back to his original position. He wordlessly reached down to his belt and grabbed, to Naruto and Kishina's point of view, a sword hilt. What's your name kid? I would like to know so I know who I'm going to kill. He asked as he activated the sword. Kishina recognizing the sword immediately jumped out of the bushes. Naruto-kun be careful that's Tabarama-sama's Reijin no Ken. I know it is Kishina. He stated narrowing his eyes. If you know what it is then you should know it's too dangerous for you to fight against it. She stated grumpily. I'd listen to the sexy bis if I were you blondie. Aoi said. My name is Naruto Namikaze Uzumaki Senju. He told the man before he turned to Kishina. You don't know what I'm capable of Kishina. You may be a swordswoman, but I assure you though I am more than capable of taking care of myself. This idiot won't even get close enough to me to use his sword. So just stay out of this. Turning his attention back to Aoi he said. This fight will be over quickly. No. Kishina shouted. I'm sorry Sachi, but even though you say you can take care of yourself you're still a genin. He is obviously jonin level judging by his reserves. She said stepping in front of Naruto. This hot tie is your mother? He said checking out Kishina. No, she's not. Naruto states emotionlessly getting a small gasp from the retied. Maybe it would surprise you Kishina, but I've been suppressing my chakra. If you want to find out my chakra levels. Then here. He said releasing his chakra. Gaining wide eyes from both Kishina and Aoi as he chose not to about what he just said about her. I am possible, his reserves, they have to be at least Kage level. Aoi told himself shaking slightly. Do you want to experience something even more powerful than that? He questioned as Aoi started shaking even more. Something even more powerful? He asked himself actually dropping the rage in no can he was starting to shake that much. Next thing he knew he was hit with the sudden urge to kill himself. Wh what I this? He said dropping to his knees. As he looked up he saw what appeared to be a red cloak surrounding the blonde, and if he looked close enough it actually looked like a fox that had nine tails. Could it be, is he actually a Jinchuriki, this is not good. He actually uses Kaiba's chakra willingly. Has he mastered her chakra already? I couldn't well didn't want to do that. And I know that Mito Bachan didn't want to either. So why does Naruto? She shook her thoughts away as she focused back on the fight, and she saw chains shoot from Naruto's palm and head toward the down shaking Aoi and wrap around him, effectively capturing him. Nani? He can use my chains as well. The Redeed couldn't believe it. Walking forward, Naruto cancelled Kayubi's chakra, allowing Aoi to breathe easier. Now Rakusho Aoi, for stealing the rage and no ken from Kanahagakur and becoming a traitor and a missing nin your punishment is death. Naruto stated as he walked forward and picked up the rage and no ken that was lying on the ground. It was then for the first time that Aoi realized that he was currently had chains wrapped around him and that he had also dropped the rage and no ken. As he watched Aoi struggle against his chains Naruto chuckled. Ahaha these are Yuzumaki chakra chains Rakusho-san they have enough power in them to suppress the Aoki of the Kayubi, so if I were you I'd stop struggling, since you stand no chance of escaping. Now face your punishment. Naruto said as he grabbed the top of Aoi's head and exclaimed human path. Ashina having no idea what her son was doing just watched as Aoi's head. Suddenly dropped and he had stopped struggling. Stepping back, Naruto released the chains that were holding Aoi and watched as his body fell lifelessly to the ground. Humph, I told you this would be over quickly he said to Kishina before walking over to the three Kumonin and released them from their bonds. Thank you. Namikaze-san. One of the females said to Naruto who just nodded in response. You know my name, so what are yours? Forgive us, my name is Samui, the redeed here is Kari the guy with the lollipop is Amoy. Pleasure to meet you three. 
Naruto said as Kashina made her way over. This is Naruto began only to be interrupted by Kari. Kashina Nami Kazu Uzumaki Senju. Killer bees mentioned you before. The smaller Ritid stated getting stars in her eyes. How's B? Is he still doing those horrible raps of his? Kashina asked getting a high from Amoy and all the time. From Kari and in it's so not cool. From Samui. Naruto-san, thank you for giving me your jacket so I could cover myself up. Unfortunately I do not have any spare shirts at the moment, since that was my last one. Samui said as she pointed to the remains of her shirt. That's fine. The male blonde said waving it off. I don't usually like wearing jackets or shirts anyway, so you can keep that for as long as you like. Why don't you give her your shirt then, if you don't like wearing it? Carrie said. I don't think H. I don't mind. Naruto said interrupting Samui who raised an eyebrow and couldn't help but blush slightly, as Naruto revealed his slightly chiseled form. Handing the shirt over he turned away not looking as the jacket moved slightly revealing one of her feasts. Samui couldn't help but smile as she saw Naruto turn away from her. He's not a pervert that just makes him even cooler in my opinion. Making sure her male teammate wasn't looking either she quickly put the shirt on before she let Naruto and Amoy know that it was alright to look. So Naruto-san I still can't believe you were able to beat Rakusho-san without even breaking a sweat. Um, yeah it was pretty easy. How did you manage to get captured anyway? He asked them making Kari and Amoy drop the heads. It was these two. Samui started pointing at her teammates. They were being too loud and the next thing we knew we were surrounded. So not cool. That's another thing, the three of you are genin level at best, so where is your jonin sensei? The sensei? WWLL let's just say he took a vacation. Pretty irresponsible of a jonin sensei leaving his genin team all by themselves. Kashina remarked. It was just your basic C rank mission we've been on plenty of them. Kerry tried to explain. Even so. This time it was Samui that spoke. If it weren't for you Naruto-san and you Kashina-san we would still be captured all because B-sensei wasn't here. Which is definitely not cool. You know something tells me that that's your favorite saying. Naruto told her. Yeah it so is. Kerry said rolling her eyes. So what if it is? Samui said snapping slightly at a redeeded friend who looked surprised by the tone in her friend's voice. Off anyway what's up with your eyes is it some kind of dejutsu? Kerry asked as Naruto narrowed his eyes. So what if it is? Going to try and steal it from me? He asked. Um no I I was just curious. The redhead stuttered slightly defending herself. You don't have to worry about that Naruto said that was the son de Ami Raikage and he was executed by the council for it. Amoy stated understanding why the blonde snapped at Kerry. For what? Failing. Or for actually trying to steal the Byakugan. Bit of both I guess. Amoy shrugged. Whatever. Anyway it is a dejutsu. It's called the Rinnegan. Getting gasps from the three Kumonin and Kashina. I take it you've heard about it. Ib sensei has told us a couple of stories about it. They're the eyes of the Rikidu Senin right? Samui asked. Close, but technically they're the eyes of Akami. It's pretty cool. He said. Which made Samui smile slightly before she quickly hid it from view. And how did you kill that guy anyway? It was like he just. Well died. Kerry asked. Oh that, well I basically just sucked his soul out of his body. You can do that. Samui asked actually showing her surprise like everyone else. It comes with the eyes. He stated. What else can they do? Kerry asked. DCH what kind of shinobi do you think I am? He asked angrily. You should know better than to ask a shinobi to reveal all of his secrets. Samui told her red-headed friend. Wary of the fact that Naruto was getting angry. Ah uh, yeah I'm sorry, it's just they look awesome, and if sucking someone's soul out of his body is an ability that comes with it. Wouldn't our like to know more about it? The dark-skinned girl asked her big freested friend. Well, yes I would actually but even so I'd prefer to see it all in action, rather than just try to pry information out of someone. Samui stated Kami. Yes well, we really should be going Naruto Kashina interrupted. Nodding he had to agree with her. Well it was a pleasure to meet you. He told the Kumonin flashing Samui a smile and getting a small one in return. Jana. He said giving them a small wave and looking at Samui one last time, before he turned around and jumped off into the forest with Kashina right beside him. It had been three days since then, and the two of them had barely said a word to each other. Of course Naruto wanted to ask her about her life and get to know her a little better, but he could tell something was seriously bothering her, so he decided to wait for her to talk about it. Of course he could take a guess at what it was that was on her mind, but dithers he knew it was better for him if he just waited. It was currently dark and they were still in the forest sitting near a small campfire uncomfortably trying to eat while sending constant glances at each other. Finally having enough she had to ask. Why did you tell Rakusho that I wasn't your mother? I think I know why but please tell me. 
she asked not even looking at him. I'm sorry alright I am, it's just that for my entire life I've never had a mother. But she tried to say something only for Naruto to raise his hand up and silence her. Please. Just listen Kashina. I know that it was in no way your fault that you weren't there, and I can understand that. But like I said I grew up without a mother, and now that you're here Sai I don't know I guess I'm just saying that I don't need you in my life. Don't get me wrong. He continued when he heard her gasp. I may not need you. But I do want you in my life, just not as a mother, but I guess I would like to be a friend. He finished with a frown as he tried to sort through his own feelings on the matter. Kashina didn't say anything for the rest of the night. When she finished her dinner she got up and went over to her sleeping bag and lied down in it before she started shedding silent tears. Are you alright Naruto? Kayubi asked as the blonde appeared in his mindscape. Not really, how could I be? I shouldn't have said anything. He told her as he wrapped his arms around her in a hug. Stroking a hand through his soft hair she told him. I'm sure everything is going to fine Narukun you're just going to have to give her some space now while she tries to figure things out, but I'm sure it's all going to be okay. I hope so Kayu. He told her. I really do. It had taken them another two days before they had reached civilization and Kishina hadn't said a word to him since that night and had barely looked at him either which was starting to tear Naruto apart. Had he destroyed any hope of ever having a relationship with her? Ayubi-chan what do I do? He tried asking her. I don't know Naruto-kun perhaps you should try talking to her instead of waiting for her to say something. She answered. That's great. He sighed now what the hell do I say to her? Hmm. She wondered striking a thinking pose nope sorry I don't know. Well we really need to find Tsunade, but I don't know the first thing about her so maybe. Where do we start looking for Tsunade? He asked looking around. Nothing. Oh well I suppose she hasn't run off on me that counts for something at least. Little did he know that Kashina didn't respond to him because she was currently vested in her own thoughts. He doesn't want me to be his mother, he wants me to be his friend, I guess I can understand that. He's been by himself for 12 years having other people look out for him. But can I really just be friends with him? He's my son for Kami's sake. When I found out I was pregnant I was the happiest I think I had ever been. I had always wanted to hold him, tug him in at night sing him a lullaby, but then that damn Siratobi came along and now look. Dot thanks to him I was never able to do those things and I wasn't even able to meet him until he found me. Dot I don't actually think I can really just be friends with him. But if I don't will he still want me in his life. I don't think I could stay away from him. I don't know what to do ah. After half an hour of Kashina searching for Tsunade and Naruto following wordlessly behind they were now entering a bar because Kashina had heard Naruto's stomach rumble few times which told her he was hungry and being a former Jinchuriki, she knew what that was like for him. As they walked in they had to stop at the front of the bar so that they could order some food. Looking around the bar Naruto saw a brunette woman sitting next to a big freested blonde woman. But that wasn't what had caught his attention. You see the brunette was holding a pig in her arms, the pig though was actually wearing what looked like a red vest and it had a pearl necklace around its neck. Naruto couldn't help but exclaim. The pig wearing people clothes. As he ran over towards it. Kashina actually paying attention for once looked over in his direction confused. When she saw where he was running to she too saw that the pig was indeed wearing clothes, but unlike Naruto that wasn't what had caught her attention. She recognized the brunette holding the pig. And looking over at her big freested companion, she instantly recognized her as the person they had been searching for. Send you Tsunade. Tsunade. She exclaimed walking over to the booth the blonde were sitting at. Shaking her head slightly at Naruto as he fussed over the pig she sat down opposite her longtime friend relative. Kashina. The woman beamed before downing a full cup of sake in one go. How have you been? The woman asked. I've been better. She replied getting a raised eyebrow from Tsunade. Who's the gaki? Tsunade asked as she too shook her head at his antics. This is M. She stopped as she realized what she was about to say. This is Naruto. As the not yet teen but still an adult heard this, he lowered his head sadly retracting himself from the clothes wearing pig and a slightly annoyed brunette and he sat down next to Kashina. Who had still yet to even look at him. As in your Naruto. Hi she said with a fake smile which no one but Naruto noticed. Which only made his feelings worse than they already were. She hates me now I know she does, how could she not? So you're little Naruto huh? Nice to finally meet you Tsunade said smiling at him. Don't look at her friests, don't look at her giant friests. Oh you know you want to Naruto-kun, I know you want to see them, feel them, lick them, suck them. Kayubi said trying to get a rise out of him. Likewise he said smiling back at Tsunade, trying to ignore what Kayubi was saying, but finding it difficult. You know. The vixen continued nonetheless. Thanks to being inside Kashina I have seen Tsunade naked. She cheekily said sending him an image of a naked Tsunade. 
Okami they better than I thought they would be. He said as the naked image reached her priests. As the image went lower he could have vomited and he almost did. Instead of a beeping there, there was in fact a big beep standing at attention. Ayubi what the tuck is that? He screamed at her only to hear the woman fox laughing like a maniac. Am you Kayubi? He shouted trying to get the Kami forsaken image out of his head. So Naruto care tell me about yourself? The Sanin asked. Maybe some other time, I really should be heading back to the village. He told her standing up and sending a sideways glance at Kashina. Nonsense you just got here. We're all family here so stay a little while. She said as Naruto and Kashina both had to hold back their flinches when the woman said family. I do apologize, but I really should be heading back. He told them before he lunged forward and hugged Kashina who was so surprised by the act that she didn't even react. I'm sorry he whispered low enough so that she was the only one who could hear him. Please don't hate me. He pleaded letting her go and hurrying out the door as Kashina looked on with wide eyes. What was that about? Tsunade asked her relative. Sayum it's complicated. She told them. Well as long as you're sticking around. Why don't you fill us in? Approximately five days later Naruto had finally returned to the village and right now he was sneaking into Ichiha Makoto's house, making his way to her bedroom, and he couldn't help but wonder how Makoto would react when he told her what happened. Sneaking over to the bed as he snuck his way inside of her room he bent down. Feeling something on her lips she instantly opened her eyes only to see a pair of glowing purple eyes looking at her. Narukoi when did you get back? She asked sitting up and kissing him on the cheek. Just now. He said as he heard her yawn. Making her lie down again he said. We can talk more tomorrow Haim, sorry to wake you up. That's alright Naruto-kun and I hope you're staying because as it is I have yet to share my bed with my fiancé. She told him. Making him lie down with her as he chuckled. Snuggling up to him and resting her head on the crook of his neck, she fell asleep a few moments later with a small smile on her face. Good night Haim. He whispered before he too joined the land of dreams. Fiancé ha. Huh? I do like the sound of that. It had been a week since Naruto had come back to the village and he was now sitting in the academy for the last time about to find out what team he was about to place on, but right now he thinking about a certain fiancé of his. I can't believe I had actually forgotten about that I mean it had happened six years ago. Flashback. I'm sorry Makoto, but unless you get engaged in the next two years I'm afraid you will not have any other choice but become breeding stock. Hiyashi Yuka told her being a representative for the Shinobi Council. Why do I have to do this? She asked getting angrier by the second. Hokage's orders. None of us on the council agreed with him, but his word is final. For what it's worth I am sorry Makoto. Sigh it's fine Hiyashi, I should have known this would happen eventually. Sighing the man said. Believe me Makoto the Shinobi Council tried everything we could think of, and the only solution we could come up with was that you find a clan heir to get engaged to. Not only would that stop you from becoming a breeding machine, it would also be better for you as a council member as well, if you were to align yourself with another clan. Sighing to the woman nodded before she realized something. All of the clan heirs are children I couldn't possibly get engaged to them within two years. We are aware of that which is why we didn't act on that. If only we could convince little Naruto to enact the craw on himself. That way she could get engaged to him within the two years. But I doubt the Kayubi would fall for it. He seems to be teaching the boy a lot of things lately which is a good considering that Minato-kun and Kishina-chan aren't here to do it themselves. Little did he know that Naruto who had come to visit Makoto was currently standing just outside the window in the living room, had ears everything, and was now listening to Kayubi, who was explaining what he had heard. Becoming a baby-making machine is a very bad thing for a woman Naruto-kun, it means they have to have babies from a few different males. But I thought a woman was supposed to have children with a man she loved. He asked her confused. Smiling she told him. Normally yes but her situation is different. You see from what I've learned from being sealed in your mother was that when a clan dies out and the clan surviving members are female, they are forced to breed with a number of males. And if the surviving members are male they unlike females, have a choice. They could either wait until they marry someone and have children then and lose all of clan privileges, or he can enact the craw on himself. What's that? When a man enacts the craw or the clan restoration act, it means that he has to marry multiple women and have heirs that way. You could only enact the craw if you're a surviving member of your clan, like you are. So I can do this craw thingy? He asked not really understanding. Hi Kayubi nodded. So why can't a woman enact it that doesn't sound right? He stated making Kayubi smile widely at him. It's not right and I don't know why they can't, I guess there are different rules for men and women inside shinobi villages. She said shrugging. If I were married to Mikoto would that stop her from becoming a baby making machine? He asked getting a gasp from Kayubi. Well yes it would if she were to marry you, she would only be required to have one baby instead of a few. 
she explained to him. He's too smart for his own good. Maybe it's because you're so damn young that you don't fully grasp the concept of what the Kra is. She thought to herself. Oh will this will be interesting I guess. A few hours later Naruto was standing in a circular room with Konoha's council, with both civilian and shinobi surrounding him sitting at the assigned seats on the council bench. Hokage-sama. Hugahiyashi said. What is this council meeting about we just had one yesterday. The Byakugan wielder asked annoyed that they had yet another council meeting in such a short span of time. That's what I'd like to know. Naruto Namikaze was came to me earlier and said he wanted to talk to the council. Naruto-kun is that true? Haruno Kiyomi asked gently seeing that he was shaking nervously. Hi. He said looking at his shoes. There's no need to be so nervous pup we don't bite. Inuzuka Tsum said. Calm down Naruku and just remember what I told you to say. Taking a deep breath he said. I want to enact the craw on myself. He said only to be met with absolute silence. That was until they all started shouting at once. That's crazy. He's too young. How the hell does he know about that anyway? The only one who wasn't shouting was Hugahiyashi. He was smiling. Yes. I knew he heard what Makoto-san and I were talking about. He may be smart for his age, but he couldn't hide his chakra signature. I guess the Kayubi has told him something about the Kra, this was wonderful news. It's the only way to stop Makoto-chan from being forced into becoming breeding stock. He tried to tell them, but no one could hear him. Well except Inuzuka Tsum thanks to her canine hearing. When she heard what he said she stopped shouting and just had warm smile on her face, so that's why he s doing this, I hope knows what he's doing. Try again Narukun this time say it louder. Kayubi encouraged him. It's the only way to stop from Makoto-chan from becoming breeding stock. He shouted as a collective gasp was heard round the room as they all stopped shouting when they heard him. Wh what? Makoto asked stunned. How does he know about that? Seeing that the woman was too stunned to speak any further than that, he ashi decided to explain. He heard us Makoto Dono. He told her being respectful in front of the council. I'm surprised you didn't sense his chakra signature beneath the window of your living room earlier today. He stated making her eyes widen. Do you really understand what the cries Naruto-chan? Kiyomi asked slightly concerned for him. Hi, it means I will have to marry more than one person. He recited. That's right Naruto, but don't you think you're a little young to go ahead with this? I know I'm six, but I don't want Makoto-chan to become a baby machine he explained. How do you know about all of this anyway? Narashikaku asked. I read it in a book he shrugged telling them what Kayubi told him to say. She knew that only a few people knew that Naruto could and did talk to her. Troublesome. Was all the man said. Do you really want to be engaged Naruto-kun? You're so young. Makoto asked him finally finding her voice. Hi Makoto-chan. He said still looking at his feet. It does appear to be the logical solution to your problem. Aburami Shibi told her behind his high-collared grey jacket. She couldn't believe it. The same boy who willing stood up to Itachi and saved her life in doing so was now willing to marry her, just so she didn't have to go through something terrible. Ami if Kashina-chan were here she'd be having a field day. She thought to herself. Let me get this straight Naruto-chan you're actually proposing a marriage to Mikoto Ichiha right now. Kiyomi asked getting a nod from the blonde boy. Well what do you say woman do you want to get hitched to a six-year-old? Sum asked her smiling. Standing up she walked over to Naruto and kneeling down, so that she eye level with him, she brought her hand up to her chin, and made him look at her. Do you really understand what you're doing Naruto-kun? She asked him looking him straight in the eye getting a yes in response. Do you really want to go through with this and marry more than one woman? She asked. If it means helping you then yes I do. He said with all the conviction a six-year-old could muster. Smiling warmly at him she meant forward and hugged him letting a couple of tears fall. You don't know how much this means to me right now Naruto-kun thank you for saving me. Dot again she whispered to him. Getting him to hug her back. I guess that means yes then. Sum said smiling as everyone agreed with her. Flashback end. Since then, he and Makoto had only gotten closer. Of course she did tell him it was a bit hard for her from going from a mother figure to a lover, but luckily she had six years to do so. Of course between the ages of 6 and 10, she still mothered over him like crazy, but that did stop when he turned 11, and she had let him see her naked for the first time. That was a sight he would never forget. Sighing, his thoughts were interrupted when two loud shouts were heard from outside the classroom door. Out of the way Eno pig that seat is mine. In your dream's forehead I'm sitting next to Naruto-kun. He couldn't help but growl at that. Damn I don't really mind the fangirls, but these two are really annoying. He knew he had to marry a minimum of four women, but could honestly say he didn't want to marry anyone like those two. Taking a look around the classroom he decided to look at the girls there. First was Hyuga Hinata, she was way too shy and timid for his liking, so she was out. 
Yamanak Aino, if she turned out to be anything like her MILF mother, then she was a definite maybe, but as she was right now, she was definitely a no. Verano Sakura. She is just as loud and annoying just like Ino. She was probably his number Onifin girl, and since he had grown up around her and knew what the spoiled princess was like and add to the fact that she didn't take being a shinobi seriously, she was a definite no. Sure academic knowledge was fine. For the academy, but in the real world you needed the real world skills that is something she didn't have. Ami, another civilian, she, unlike Sakura, did take being a shinobi seriously, but she was too concerned with gossip and the latest fashion and all that girl's crap he didn't care about. So she was out. The rest of the girls of the class were either too annoying or if they. And from a rich merchant family they were way too stuck up for his liking, so they were out as well. I guess you could say that he was into older and more mature women, since he had been around them all his life. Although those two Kumonin, Samui and Kari he met certainly weren't bad. Samui had a personality that he definitely liked. Cool calm and collected, kind of like him. And Kari, from what he could tell was the complete opposite of her, but he liked that as well. Plus that red hair and dark skin combination she had was certainly something he didn't mind in the slightest. Tuning back into the classroom he realized for the first time that Aruka had walked in and had just made a short speech. Oh well, it probably wasn't anything important anyway. Alright oh team 1 is. Dot. Yeah, he tuned back out. Team 7 is Haruno Sakura, Sai and Ami. He said getting groans from the two girls and silence from Sai who Naruto knew was part of Danzo's root anbu. How did he know that? You may ask well, having a father as a kage he found out a few things, which he told his wife who happened to be Kashina and had a Kayubi sealed inside of her who was now sealed inside of him, so she told him all about it, and on one the many occasions he had been invited to join Danzo for dinner well the man came right out with the information. Yeah right. It took Naruto a few times to get the information out of him, but due to the man's growing annoyance, he told him about the root program and how it had all started. And yes that Sai was also a part of the program. Of course the man had been reluctant at first, but he knew that without a shadow of a doubt that when Naruto gave his word he wouldn't tell anyway about it, he knew he could trust him. Sure he didn't know everything else about Root like what missions he was doing and so. But Naruto didn't mind. Everyone has their secrets or like a certain shadow using clan would say. It was too troublesome. Anyway back to the teams. He made under Yuuhi Kurenai is Inuzuka Kiba, Hyuga Hinata and Aburami Shino. The shy Hyuga, the quiet Aburami and the loud arrogant egotistical pervert. I hope he doesn't try anything with the Ice Queen, who am I kidding, she's beautiful so of course he will. Team 9 is still in circulation, so Team 10 under Siratobi Asuma is Yamanaka Ino, Nara Shikamaru. Troublesome and Akamichi Chaoji. The Ino Shikachao Ryo, nice combination. And Team 11 is Nami Kazi Uzumaki Senju Naruto. Hey. How come he gets to be by himself and doesn't need a team or a sensei? Kiba yelled. Because there was an uneven amount of graduates this year and since Naruto scored perfectly on all of his tests and is rookie of the year, the council decided that he will be by himself and would just train and go on missions with teams of his choosing. He told the class as Naruto was definitely surprised. That's interesting. He thought with a frown guess that only means one thing though. Oh and what's that Narukun? Freedom. He exclaimed in his head as Kayubi giggled at him. Naruto Aruka said getting the blonde's attention. Even though you don't have to wait for a sensei, I would like you stay here and wait for them all to leave before you do. He said getting a confused shrug from the blonde. It's just so you know who the sensei are Naruto. That way if you ever need to look for them you know what they look like. Fair enough. A few minutes went by before the door opened. Saratobi Asuma was the first one to walk in Team 10 come with me. He said before walking out and Naruto noticed someone had a gain jutsu up in the corner of the room. Three hours later both sensei of Team 7 and Team 8 had yet to arrive. Man where the hell is this chick? Kiba growled with Akamaru barking in agreement which just made Naruto laugh. What the hell are you laughing at Namikaze? Oh it's nothing, it's just you and your pet are that pathetic that both of you failed to notice the game jutsu in the corner of the room, isn't that right Shino, Hinata? Getting highs in agreement. Sighing the woman known as Yuuhi Kurenai, lowered the game jutsu. Naruto I wish you wouldn't insult people like that especially my new genin. Sorry Kurenai-chan, Kiba's just too easy. Smirking he finished. Just like your friend outside the window. Hey. The woman shouted indignantly opening the window and pouted at Naruto. I'm not easy Naruto-kun, weren't you the one who said you would tuck me if I bought you some ramen? Aren't you the one who told me you would willingly let yourself be tied up and spread eagle if I bought you a stick of dango and a bottle of sake? You're the one who keeps making me feel your crotch. You're the one who keeps showing me your panties every day. Off children, that's enough. Kurenai said getting them to look at her. Yes mom. They both said smirking and getting a look from Kurenai that promised pain later. Good. 
She said and knowing they weren't going to say anything she turned to her team. The mate come with me. She said walking to the door before she turned to Anko. Are you coming? Yes yeah, sure, I want to see what the brats are made of. See you Gaki. She waved to Naruto hurrying after Kurenai and her three bewildered genin. Knowing that Kakashi was going to be here any second, Naruto decided he had had enough of waiting, so he quickly performed a shunshin, just as the door opened, and the silver-haired man poked his head in the door, and he appeared moments later outside the nearest dango stand. A few minutes and a wild guess later, Naruto appeared at training ground aid and saw Anko sitting on a log watching the genin take the real test. Here you are. He told her smiling as he handed her a stick of dango and a bottle of sake before sitting down next to her. Thanks Gaki. She said cheerfully quickly chomping down on one of the dango. So how are they he asked her. DCH they are a sensory team and they have the potential to be a good one. And Kiba. He wondered chuckling. Has already hit on her. She replied back. And how did she react? She hasn't done anything sadly she just ignored it. Oh man. He whined oh well at least I didn't miss anything good then. They're telling me Kurenai's been running circles around these kids. As expected. He stated as Anko nodded. So my place tonight. She asked wiggling her eyebrows at him. Huh? He asked only to get the sake bottle waved in his face. You know that's not why I bought them for you Anko. I know Gaki and thanks. She said bumping him with her shoulder as he just smiled warmly at her. Do you want to see my panties? She asked suddenly after a moment making the blonde laugh slightly. Only if they're around your ankles. He teased. Anytime you want Gaki, anytime you want. Um, I'll be sure to keep that in mind. He said as he lunges forward and takes a bite out of her last dango. You're a bastard you know that. She told him shaking her head and giving him a look that told him that he should sleep with one eye open. And you are abyss. He replies. Damn right. She said happily eating the last of her dango and throwing the skewer away. Hey that almost hit me. A woman said with a playful tone. Turning around the duo came face to face with Inuzuka Tsum. Tsum sama what are you doing here? Anko asked. The haha don't give me that formal crap Anko. The woman glares playfully at her. I was just out stretching my legs when I caught my pup scent, and knowing that he was meeting his sensei today I'd thought come and check it out. Namikaze. Came the gruff voice of Kurumaru, Tsum's companion dog who nodded to the blonde. Kurumaru. Naruto nodded back. How's the pack? The blonde asked. They're good. The dog replies. One of the females is pregnant. Kurumaru informed him. That's great. Congratulations. The blonde exclaimed. I haven't seen you in while Naruto Kuntsum said interrupting their conversation. Omen, I've been busy he said rubbing the back of his head. I heard. I hope you're not too busy tucking Raymond waitresses to come visit me sometime. She said smiling her elongated fangs visible. I'm sure I can make time for you Tsum chan he told her chuckling. So how's the pup doing anyway turning toward the test that was taking place? Honestly. We haven't been paying attention. Naruto informed her. DCH, are you two lovebirds too busy deciding on your next romp? She chuckled as Anko blushed slightly and Naruto smirked. So what if we are? Jealous. Ahaha. She barked making Naruto's smirk widen. Oh I Namikaze stop flirting with my mother or I am going to come over there and kick your A. Shoot a Kiba. Naruto yelled back, but Kiba didn't. Don't tell me to shoot up Namikaze stay away from my mother you bastard. Meanwhile Tsum widened her eyes and had started to shiver slightly at the dominating aura the blonde had started giving off. You know what, I'm sorry Tsum chan but I'm done with him I've been meaning to teach that stupid mud a lesson for years now and I suppose it's as good a time as any. Naruto said standing and began to walk over to the younger Inuzuka. Anko made a move to stop him but surprisingly Tsum put a hand on a shoulder and shook her head. Tsum? She tilted her head in confusion seeing a look on the woman's face she didn't recognize. The woman didn't respond though, her stare was fixated on the blonde. That aura. She thought licking her lips. Gurumaru, having the sense to know what was going on and being the leader of the pack, started barking orders at Akamaru who upon hearing him, immediately ran toward the older dog. Hey Akamaru get back here. Kiba shouted after the dog. Bancho Tenen. Naruto exclaimed as Kiba went flying toward the blonde's open hand, screaming all the while only to shut up when Naruto's hand wrapped around his throat. You really are pathetic mutt. Instead of being distracted by what your mother was doing, you should have been focusing on your genin test. Naruto growled at him before dropping the Inuzuka on the ground who started gasping for air. Shinra Tensei. Naruto said sending Kiba flying backwards. You really need to learn to stay out of things that have nothing to do with you. Naruto stated. What do you mean nothing to do with me she's my mother. Kiba yelled rubbing his throat. That may be, but what or who she does is none of your concern. Naruto stated earning a growl from Kiba. Tsuuga. 
He yelled jumping up and spinning. As he was getting closer and closer to Naruto the blonde just raised his palm and muttered. Shinra Tensei. Making the spinning kiba fly backwards again and land in a heap on the ground before he suddenly felt himself being wrapped up by chains. Walking up to the Inuzuka, Naruto placed a hand on Kiba's head. You know Kiba all I have to do right now is say one little thing and you would be dead. He growled taking his hand of Kiba's head roughly. When I tell you to do something you do it dog. Compared to me Kiba you will never be the alpha male. The blonde stated unleashing some Kai that both Akamaru and Kurumaru responded to instinctively and ran toward Naruto and stood next to him, bared their fangs and started growling at Kiba. Which took everyone completely by surprise. Aka Akamaru. Kiba asked in disbelief seeing his friend act like that. Soom, who had begun walking forward, immediately froze when both dogs turned to face her and continued growling. Taking the warning to back off she took a few steps back and the dog satisfied with what she did, turned back to Kiba and kept on growling. Stopping the Kai a minute later and telling the dogs to stop he turned around and walked past Soom. You better teach the mutt some respect Soom or the next time he may find himself neutered. He growled at her before he grabbed Anko's hand, and the two of them walked out of the field, leaving a terrified Kiba a surprised Soom and an extremely confused teammate behind. Shrugging, Kurinai decided that was enough for one day. She had already decided to pass her team since they had started working as team from the very beginning, so she told the three of them congratulations and to meet her here tomorrow at 7 before she shunshined away. Do you mind telling me what that was all about? A bewildered Anko asked. Sorry it's an alpha thing. He said. Ugh sure it is. The purple-haired woman shrugged not really know what else to say. After a minute of walking and Anko directing him toward the nearest bar, Naruto was currently enjoying his first drink. That was until. What the hell are you doing in here you filthy snake whore? Sighing Anko looked at Naruto and was surprised that not only were his eyes narrowed in anger, but they were red. The Rinnegan was still in place, but the color had gone from purple to red. Must mean he's pissed or something. Standing up and turning toward the man Naruto grabbed him by the throat with his left hand. Nami Kazi. The man gasped for air as the hand on his neck tightened. Call her that again and I won't stop here. He growled placing his right palm against the man's stomach and muttered Shinra Tensei, just as he released the man's throat, causing the man to fly backwards and hit the wall behind him. Turning toward all the other occupants of the bar unleashed his kai, making sure they all got the message before Anko grabbed him and shunshined out of there, leaving all of them shaking in fear, which was what Kurinai, having just arrived, walked into looking for Anko and Naruto. When they had arrived at Anko's house the two of them were standing in the lounge room. Naruto what's going mmpph she stopped when Naruto turned around and smashed his lips to hers. Eyes still red. Pushing him off her Anko slapped him. What the hell are you doing? She yelled at him eliciting a growl from the blonde who had started walking toward her, forcing the purple haired woman to take a step back and unleash some snakes to restrain him. Naruto what the hell is going on? Why are you red? She shouted as Naruto started to thrash around trying to get free. Naruto calm down. She yelled as Naruto did although his eyes had started to glow and was now staring into space. In his mindscape Naruto was looking at Kayubi like what the tuck. And the vixen was looking sheepishly at him. Omen, you were angry and you know I just had to take advantage of that. She told him. Although most of that wasn't even my doing. Was I right in thinking that by me being sealed inside of him, I'm tainting his soul just like the Jubi did to him. You need to calm down Baruto just take a deep breath. On the outside of the sea Lanko saw his eyes turn back from red to purple and was hoping he had calmed down now. Omen Naruto said softly looking at the floor. Releasing him with a sigh the snakes puffed away. What the hell was that? I was angry and then that guy at the bar called you a sigh I lost control and then Kayubi started influencing me. Grimacing she asked. But you're okay now right? Hi and I am sorry about you know the kiss. Then no biggie, I am irresistible. She chuckled throwing a kunai at his cheek. Moving behind him she licked the blood from the cut and told him. But if you ever do something while you're like that again, I will cut of your nuts off and shove them down your throat and make you choke on them. Gulping, he responded. Hi. Good. She said kissing his cheek and reaching down with one hand and started to rub his crotch. Which was the scene that Kurinai saw when she shunshined into the room. There you two are. Kurinai Nai Chan. They said with Anko not stopping from rubbing his crotch, which she noticed with a small amount of glee, was starting to harden. What was that back at the training field Naruto-kun? Kurinai asked, her hands on her hips. Ah sorry about that I was just teaching Kibo lesson. Yes well be that as it may, I would appreciate not doing so when I'm with my team. Be ah I'll keep that in me and de Kurinai-chan. Naruto bit his lip to stifle his moan as Anko had gone one step further and had actually gone inside his pants and started to stroke his length, making Kurinai roll her eyes and blush slightly. 
Do the two of you have to do this right now? You're just jealous Nai Chan you really need loosen up a little bit and maybe this big thing here can help you with that. If I had to guess I'd say it's about 9 inches. Anko said looking at Naruto for confirmation. 8 one half. He shrugged. 8 and a half inches on a 12 year old, maybe I can no Kurinai bad thoughts you with Asuma Kurinai chastised herself although 81 halves inches is bigger than Asuma has only 5, maybe 51 halves. 81 halves inches huh? It's bigger than any of the toys I've got. Anko mused. As she now had actually pulled down his pants that had pulled around his ankles. When Naruto had finally finished fumming about 40 seconds later Anko, who made sure he was done, let the head of his beep fall out of her mouth which she immediately closed to make sure she didn't lose any for what she had planned, stood up, walked over to Kurinai and locked lips with the red-eyed beauty who had opened her mouth in shock, quickly realizing what her friend had done. This is Naruto's fum. She screamed in her head as her tongue instinctively battled with Anko's. A minute later Kurinai was finally able to swallow the fum that Anko had graciously given her when the women broke apart. So this is what a man's fum tastes like the brunette thought. The furthest I've ever gone with Asuma Kun is a hand job, and when he came I never do what Anko had done, I just let it get all over my hand and wash it off later. Licking her lips she decided that she really didn't mind the taste. It's a little bit salty, but it's definitely not bad. You know you have a lot of fum for a 12-year-old gaki. Anko told Naruto who just blushed and quickly pulled up his pants to the amusement of Anko, who just shook her head with a smirk. Why did you do that? The blonde asked. Shrugging the woman responded felt like it, and besides, I've been wanting to do that, and much much more to you forever, so hell if you want Gaki you can swing by my place anytime you want she told him with a wink, as Naruto's face went completely red, and blood dripped from his nose. So Nai-chan what do you think? Did it taste good? Anko asked turning to her friend. Um well, yes I guess it did. The Gain Jutsu mistress said getting embarrassed. Smirking Anko said. So that's what it takes to melt the Ice Queen, a stomach full of nice warm fum. Which caused Kurinai to go as red as tomato. Biggling at her friend Anko said I told you that you need to loosen up. Now why don't you go and find Asuma so he can give you the nice hard tucking he's been begging to give you. Anko told her making Kurinai sputter out what sounded like gibberish before she quickly left. Well Gaki what do you say want to go get some dango? The purple-haired woman asked Naruto as she turned to face him. Ugh sure why not? Naruto responded scratching the back of his head and smiling. Seeing that cute expression on his face, it instantly reminded her of how they first met, which was something she would likely never forget. It was night time and she had just come back from a long mission, and trying to ignore the hateful states and glares the villagers always gave her was making her way to the nearest bar. When she had sat down and started drinking not even 10 minutes later a group of guys came over to her, picked her up and carried her over to the entrance and tossed her out the street, saying something like she should go back to the pedophile or something like that. The couple of the guys that had decided that tossing her out into the street wasn't good enough had walked over and beat their fists back about to start beating her, which sadly wouldn't have been for the first time, only to end up flying backwards. When the two of them stood up and tried to see who or what had hit them. She remembered that they froze and taken a step back. And when she turned around to look at what they seemed to be afraid of she looked into the darkness and saw a pair of glowing purple eyes with three rings in each of them. Unlike them she recognized those eyes as the Rinnegan. Betting scared the two men ran away while the others who had just tossed her out had just walked back inside the bar just before Naruto had stepped into the light. Flashback. Bug thanks Gaki. She mumbled. She didn't thank anyone except maybe Kurinai she thought to herself. Anything for a pretty lady. Naruto said scratching the back of his head and smiling. Flashback end. Of course back then he was only 8, now he's 12 and someone I consider a close friend. But benefits I hope after seeing how big he is. She perversely thought to herself. Well come on then let's go. Naruto said effectively shaking the woman out of her reverie. Chapter end. Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.